Hey, this is Ashley and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic and I'm here to talk a little bit about While You Were Sleeping, which is our current drama for the K-Drama Watch Along. Today I'm going to be talking about episodes 5 through 8. So if you have any comments about those episodes, make sure you leave them down below. Let me know how you guys are liking the series. But let's just go ahead and jump into these episodes. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, so one of the things that gets put out very early on is that Hongju is outed for being potentially a reporter that one of Jae Chan's co-workers thinks that he recognizes the face. And this is after a comment that Hongju had made about a particular case and what her thoughts were on based off of what she knew. So Hongju also was starting to have more of her behaviors come out from the way that she was previously to before she stopped being a reporter. And so it was really interesting to see this come to light because the first thing that we see is Hongju intervenes in an event to try to help somebody and then she ends up getting chased down. Um, but the actual person that was involved ended up being a person that was actually the sister of an event in a case that I'm going to go into very quickly. Um, but before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit more about Hongju and being a reporter. So we had a huge trajectory. It went from her kind of wanting to work again to her getting out there and her people being suspicious of her being this former reporter. And then all of a sudden she's already out there getting a job as a junior reporter and making her rounds and starting to make her mark again on the world, which was a huge progression to go through in just four episodes. But it was refreshing to see Hongju finally back out there and not kind of cooped up with her mother. But we did get a great scene with her and her mother about Hongju really wanting to get back out there and not actually being locked up anymore. And it wasn't like she was actually locked up. She was doing it by her own choice. She was worried, but her mother was trying to make her see that maybe it wasn't such a good idea for her to get out there, but Hongju was tired of living for the what if. She didn't know when it was gonna happen and she just kinda wanted to live and enjoy her life. So it is very understandable that she did eventually push herself to just get back out there. So I'm not going to talk about the episodes in particular by episode, episode, episode. I may mention that certain events come up in an episode, but I do want to take this in a case by case um, discussion because what we see in these episodes that really starts to become even more clear than it did in the first few episodes is that things are broken down by these cases. So these three people, Wu Taek, Jae Chan, and Hongju, are all tied together and their lives are progressing and it's really broken down by a couple episodes or this case and a couple episodes are another case, so on and so forth. So I want to talk about the specific cases and how the people interact with them rather than just talking about just episode by episode because then I kind of miss the whole picture of the case because the cases do span over episodes. So let's do this. So the first case that we start to get into was the case of the man who died and his brother and sister were grieving over him. So in this situation, the brother of the man who died was with him. And he is the one who goes to trial. He had filed an insurance claim on his brother and people start to question and wonder, things have gone a little bit afoul. Um, despite all of his crying something just seems off and the result that we end up getting and i will just i'm gonna spoil it because this is a, this is a spoiler episode of, as i'm discussing this through episode eight but um pretty much it ultimately ends up being that the brother um who ended up killing the one who died who murdered him <laughs> um there had been a bunch of cats, which Hongju conveniently had been reporting on these serial cat murders because cats had been turning up dead. And they'd been turning up dead because um, this brother was annoyed by their meowing, so he was feeding the cats potassium cyanide. Um, in doing that, it killed the cats every single time. And he was having a disagreement with his brother. He needed the money from his brother. And so what ended up happening was he 
decided to set up a car crash that would kill his brother which is what the medical examiner and everything decided to determine initially that that was his cause of death however he wasn't satisfied with the idea that the car crash would kill him because what if the car crash didn't work so he actually drugged his brother with potassium cyanide which is what actually killed him and then had the car crash which then he then begged that his brother wouldn't be autopsied and as a result we find this out and the problem is is that he ended up getting away free because the evidence was not for them they never had done the autopsy but when Hongju and Wu Take finally make the connection that hey what if he was poisoning the cats and that's why the cats were turning up dead and they just hadn't connected the dead cats to the brother that's when we finally got to see that <laughs> they went to confront and check on the sister who was in shock and in disbelief that his brother her brother actually did that but um this man ends up stabbing Wu Take, which leaves him really, really badly injured and in the hospital for days. But with all of that, they do end up being able to actually catch him, which is a good thing. Um, so they catch the, they catch the murderer, and ultimately, I believe that he gets taken in. But the big thing is that Wu Take is now put into this position of vulnerability. He's in the hospital for a while, and we kind of see him getting taken out of the action just a little bit before he eventually goes to stay with Ju and her mother again. Since he's very injured and he now lives alone, he stays with them for a little bit, um, just until he can get all the way on his feet. But this brings us to the next case, because yes, we are already on to the next case. So, the next case is related to, more to Wu Take in that it is one of his best friends growing up. And in fact, they used to be roommates until recently, as Wu Take says, a year and a half ago. So they were very close. And what happens is after he is accused of this murder, he goes to Wu Take to try to find out what he should do. And Wu Take tells him that if you're guilty, if you actually did it, run but if you are innocent then turn yourself in so that's what he does he turns himself in but he's a mess he's distraught he's really terrified because based off of everything that things are being seen he is being painted as the bad guy even jay chan is very suspicious of this guy and it is unfortunate because hongju is also dead set on the idea that it is actually him as well and this kind of actually breaks the group apart against a, a little bit because Wu Take is certain that he is innocent and he has seen things and he's he just feels very confident that he actually did it despite not having actually seen the event to know if he actually did it or not. Um, but this does break the group apart a bit. But as Wu Take goes in to make his statement about everything and why he told his friend to turn himself in, it becomes clear to Jay Chen and all the other prosecutors on the team that, yeah, his friend doesn't seem like he's actually guilty. And Hongju is actually convinced by Yobam that his friend is actually pretty violent and it's a very good chance that he may have actually done it, which kind of cements Hongju even further. But thankfully, we learn later on that Hongju is a little bit suspicious because of the fact that she's agreeing with Yobam, which one should be if you're agreeing with Yobam. Um, so ultimately, by the end of episode eight, we do find out what is the actual cause of this woman's death, um, though not everybody on the team, actually nobody, Wu Tech, Jay Chen, or Hongju, know exactly what caused it but it was actually a complete accident and it was actually her Roomba that caused the marking on the floor that made it fall and at this point they just need to go find the Roomba um, but they actually need to figure out that it's the Roomba that caused it but the show did actually show us 
that that happened. And that's pretty much where the episode ended off. But there are a couple other things that I wanted to note. Yobam does, does have a bit of a conscious, conscious. He tends to ignore it, but he does have one. When he was working with the client who murdered his brother, um, after he got him off, he actually went into the bathroom and was washing his hands. He was saying I, he, that he couldn't believe that he had shook hands with the, that man and he was actually washing his hands until they bled and he like he couldn't get it off of him, the dirt, the stench off of him for doing that. So it's clear that he does have a conscious. It's just he's very easy, he very easily ignores it, which is a little bit troublesome. Um, also, it was really, really funny seeing Hongju pop out of the bathroom ranting about how she needed her razor because he, she can't believe her legs hair have got that long and oh my gosh, her armpit hair and it's only been a day. It was actually really, really, really funny to see because she just popped out and then all of a sudden there's Jay Chan and his brother just waiting out there for breakfast with her mom. It was actually quite an amusing moment. Um, also, we had more flashbacks of Hongju and Jae Chan, um, and it's got a lot to do with the, in particular, the case about believing somebody. Um, and it was really nice to see how much of a stand-up person Jae Chan is, but it's also really interesting to see where Hongju kind of gets that drive where she can kind of just cement herself into one point of view and is unable to change it. Um, whereas you see Jay Chen, who is still willing and wanting to save somebody, even if they know that a situation may not be good. So it's just really interesting to see those flashbacks. Um, the flashbacks are actually getting more interesting as the show has been going on. But yeah, that is my recap of the next four episodes. So the next four episodes we will be watching are going to be nine through 10. 12 and I will have another video up next Monday but if you guys like this please make sure you like it if you like to see more more videos from me make sure that you subscribe bye